Hey, hey, what up, people? Iggy here, Falltech Unlimited, the holster guy. We are doing uh, a couple Hellcat uh, holsters today. So believe it or not, I actually, um, I already made some holsters for this on a uh, VAC setup, and they don't fit the gun. So I'm going to have to go back and do them uh, old-fashioned. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I already threw them out because I'm not going to need them. So this area right here needs to be blocked out on the mold because it goes in but once it's in it doesn't come out and it doesn't come out because of this right here that mark so you actually have to block that out so on the vacuum press i'm going to use some um water weld i'm going to go ahead and shape that and work on that but that's neither here nor there so i got the blue gun to do the test fitting and yeah it does not come out whatsoever and i know this one works how i block it and whatnot so i'm going to go ahead and do that which is a shame, so I made five of these, cut them, trimmed them, sanded them, put them together, and they didn't work, so in the trash they go, which is no big deal, so I'm going to uh, do it the old-fashioned way, which is no problem to me, and I know you guys don't mind watching it, so this is going to be uh, right-handed, all five of them, I am making five, out, uh, right handed, out, uh, inside the waistband, and uh, with adjustable cant and adjustable retention, so. All right, there's number five. And it's this right here, which makes the foam press work and not the vacuum, because I overlap it and go into there. And that is the reason why this one works. And this is for a, uh, a store. A friend of mine called me up and he needs 20 something holsters. So this was a couple weeks ago he messaged me. Uh, so I'm getting it done. And I just I couldn't believe it. So I got them all done and then these five aren't fitting. And uh, they are not going to the store if they are not fitting. So we know this is going here. We know, actually, if you have the firearm and whatnot, you can always compare. So I gotta go to at least there. Right where that divot is. All right, and there's a little bit of a that edge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna put this here. That way, when we press this, this doesn't slide because it will slide. And then when it slides, it will piss you off. Reason being, you just wasted all that time and for nothing because you will reheat it again. Now I've I've been to the point where I have actually reheated a holster. I think my, my personal best was like six times before I got it right. And I'll, I'll tell you what, that leaves for a very long frustrating evening. And then you get nothing done except that one holster. Absolutely terrible. But anyways, um, because of the, if you notice the plane difference, we're going to need to block underneath this. So I just did some five seven holsters and we're gonna block underneath that so we got this right here and then if I could find it I believe this one's too tall nope that's perfect all right so we'll figure out the placement of where this is gonna go and because it's going canton will be right there so we'll throw that here throw this down Right there. And again, I only need to make five, so I will keep this as it is, and just keep uh, keep making five. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the holsters or the foam in the oven to get that nice and warm. Luckily, I've had the wood stove going all day, so it's nice and warm in here. And these are all going to be black, so we will take an 8x8, eight eight, and we will cut our 8-inch wide sheet here into three. 
eight by eights, and I know what you're thinking. You need five. That's why we're gonna do it again. There's all five. So we got the oven going. Now we just need one more on this. It's the tension plate. Make sure there's no kydex crap on them because you'll see an indent in your kydex. Muzzle end. There we go. And then off the trigger. And I know these come with a, they can come with an optic, so. But we'll do that. Letting this warm up. Still got a couple minutes, but I'll show you. I just did a video on this. It's currently uploading. But check this out. Bam! Got a router table. So uh, I'm just waiting on the uh, the bit to come in. So we go ahead and do that. I just installed this right here for now. But this is um, going to be the new workstation. I got my drill press up here. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a full enclosure over it. And uh, I might set it up for um, like for the shop vac to grab stuff on. I haven't really decided yet how I'm going to do it. But I think my buffer... My wheel, that sander that's right there. I think I'm going to take that and put it right here. And then I'll include both of them in a nice bin so I could um, uh, do it all in one area. And then have that all enclosed in. And then somehow put the shop back on, like maybe with PVC pipe running under the table. But you can see underneath, I have it set up. And then I put the power on off switch right there. And uh, I'm going to get some... Uh, spotlights so I could go ahead and use a spotlight for this spotlight for the drill press and then a spotlight for the bandsaw which I'm just going to show you again because this thing's awesome how sweet is that I love it but the only thing I'm missing about I'm going to put my trash can back so if you remember, it should be good. I had the bandsaw on this corner, so, but I have it um, about four feet apart, so that's enough to get uh, a sheet of Kydex through and not hit this. So I th I'm thinking that'll be good the way it is. So I'll have the bench for whatever I'm working on on the bandsaw, and then it can come around and go to my drill press if need be. I haven't used my drill press in a while, but I'm going to get back into it. And then go on to the router table, the sanding wheel, and then over here. Should be fine. Should be good. I'm digging it. So, oh, just pop the breaker. My TV shut off. Turn that back on. So the oven's going. Oh. Here we are. All right, and these are. I organized the flashlights finally. So these are all pretty much live flashlights. Cost of being a holster maker. But anyways, so yeah, I'm digging it. But we're gonna get some uh, Kydex in the oven. We will get this Hellcat pressed and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Cheers. Fresh out of the press, it looks ballin'. So you can see, the difference see how deep it goes in here and it doesn't go as deep because well that's just the um, that's just foam so that is the reason why my foam press works a lot better than these ones so as long as I fix that we'll be fine so get this apart we're gonna have to cut right here no big deal and voila and that'll allow us to pull it apart are and the second one is in or the second piece so like I said we're building five of these 
So here's uh, here's three. The second one's in there, and this is number five. So, all right. So we're gonna leave that be, and then we're gonna continue this. And uh, if you want, you could look at it and be like, "Yep, yeah, that's gonna work." So, uh, drill your holes. Bam. And then uh, grab my foamy that I use strictly for measuring these. Mark them. Drill them. Okay. And then, uh, oh, my deburring tool is at the other end of the bench, so we'll wait on that. Because right now, technically, we're against the clock because we have that piece in the oven. So, pop this up. Push to there. And this allows for the RMR cut. And bam, boom. I'll cut this real quick and then we'll be back for the next one. I need to swap out a bit. I wore this one a little down. These are uh, 240 grit Dremel, part number 445. Uh, yeah, there you go. So they're 240 grit that comes in pack of six. I love them. It's what I use. Sometimes it's just a pain to get on. There we go. Up.
Man, that's nerve-wracking one-handed. I totally just drooled on myself saying that. And it just tripped. <laughs> Anyways, here's uh, three others. That other one is uh, almost done. So we'll knock these out, sand them, and then uh, go from there. Since I have these four all cut, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll clean them up. Again, the uh, new deburring tool. Love this thing. We'll throw it in. There you go. There's one. This thing's definitely nice. The only thing I notice is that when crap gets in the slide, then it doesn't work anymore, which is no big deal. Apparently I missed a burr right here. Got it. Cool. So that one's all done. This is definitely a nice tool to have so you don't mark up the sides if you accidentally slip. And it was less than 40 it was like $32 or something like that. Definitely, definitely recommend it. So these holsters, um, they're going to a gun store, local gun store to me, and my mother's been looking for a, uh, a new firearm for a while, because uh, she's, she's disabled, she got wicked bad uh, arthritis and whatnot. So, um, <laughs> so they fa I found, finally, this store just happened to have a Shield 9 uh, 380 EZ. So I talked with the owner, and uh, so I'm gonna pick up my mom to go drop this order off to him, and we're gonna be trading like pretty much half of these holsters for the um, for the firearm. So before we traded for an engine, so this one we're actually gonna be trading for uh, a nine uh, nine millimeter, which is pretty sweet because my mom right now has an LCR, and that thing's just a piece of crap. So we're gonna upgrade it for, and uh, we'll put it on consignment and or put it towards it either one. So. Looking forward to tomorrow. So I'll show you that when we trade uh, trade out these holsters. So we're getting the firearm um, plus cash, which is nice because you know can't uh, can't buy things with firearms. But I guess technically you can nowadays because it's you know just as good as gold. But so anyways, yeah. So we're trading out. Um, oh God. So oh, let's see here. I don't know. It's like 20 holsters for for this gun, something like that. I'll have to do the math, but it's not not even 20 holes. Sorry, it's like uh, like like 10 or 12. All right, so these are clean. These are all set. And uh, let's get let's see here. There we go. And let's get some uh, some hardware in here. So I already got some pre-cuts. Throw these in. So the retention. Throw these over here. Uh, the slotted nuts. Are a quarter inch. These are three eighths roughly, and then these are 0.4375 from under the head. So, grab a screw gun wherever it went. Right behind me. Tell you what, once you get one of these, you never want to use a screwdriver again. Again, you could find every single thing that I use material-wise on holstersmith.com or knifekits.com. It is literally the same business, and uh, I've been using them for five years. It was funny, so when I first started all this, I had to allocate different parts with different sources. And, uh, you know, over the years, I've got to know the owner of Knifesmith, Steve Andrews, and... Uh, 
He'd be like, you know, what else do you need? You know, and I told him, I was like, I get 90% of my stuff. And he's like, well, what do we need to do to get 100% of your stuff? So I showed him, this was a while ago, this is what I get in other places. And then lo and behold, shortly after, he started carrying all that. So they're carrying more and more, definitely, to accommodate all the holster benders, which is really nice. Five are done, and I am going to get some, uh, some. All right, so there's five here. We're going to be using these. These are three eighth screws. It's one, two, three, four, five. Let's get some Loctite on there. You can use either red or blue. Blue is probably preferred because uh, red you literally have to heat up past the point of the Kydex burning. So generally, if you use red, you have to cut off whatever it is you Loctite it on. Which I've had to do in the past, but I really don't have to worry about anything going anywhere. Alright, so these are quarter inch posts. This is quarter inch here. And if you notice, I only did half of the uh, screws I have out. And again, there's a reason for that. Alright, I get five of these. These aren't lasered yet. I'll have to do that. Uh, get these guys. And we're going to take the one with the Loctite and throw it in the one that's that doesn't move. And then one without the Loctite and that goes in the one that does move. Square it up. go and then there it is finished holster and I love these bins you can see that bin this bin is uh they're like a dollar fifteen each at Home Depot and I want to say I have like 30 of them they're just I think they're like the perfect size I can you know in larger orders I could definitely use bigger size bins but they suffice because generally in my largest order they don't do more of 10 holsters in a bin or model rather okay Jeez. and these are also going to have a final uh, rub down as well before they go in the package and they get a business card too. each one gets a business card under the clip but I definitely will show you the uh, you know the firearm that my mom's gonna pick up tomorrow so like I said I'm gonna take her to the store probably take the girlfriend go out I know she's looking for nine and She's building an AR right now, that's why you kind of see a couple AR parts scattered across my bench. Alright. I know these are for the Springfield Hell Kitty. So, I'm actually going to show you what I do next. All right, that's PayPal. Get out of that. No, we don't care. We'll go into my Dymo. Let's shut this off. All right, so I know we're doing Springfield. So let's see here. Recently printed. They should pop up. There we go. Springfield.
Hellcat, and these are right-handed. All right, and then we need five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Should pop up here. Oh, what do you know? Six minutes ago, Brett Shasberger commented, best Kydex how-tos. Hell yeah, man, appreciate it. I'll give you a shout out. Since we're right here now, you can see I'm on my uh, RSR site, so I'm getting some stuff in. But anyways, Brett, thank you, sir. I'll sure to uh, reply to you soon. So we got these. Now, let's see if I remember where I put these. Da, 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 da. Ah, there they are. Okay, had some ice cream earlier. Get rid of that. Some online orders. That's here. This is how I label. So I'll take these. I'm going to set you up on the stand and I'll show you real quick what I do. So get yourself some, uh, get yourself a squeegee. So you're definitely going to want that because it just, it helps out. And I'll show you exactly what we do, or at least how, how I do it. I've been doing this uh, since day one. Haven't had an issue with it. People seem to like it. So, and I'll tell you, I'll, I never had a store complain about um, my packaging so but that's completely up to you the way I see it is people are just gonna throw out the package it comes in they're not gonna save it so at least if I do um, Ziploc bags they can at least reuse the bags that's my thought process or throw it out if they don't want it I don't care Anyway, so I use the green because the green signifies that it's a inside the waistband holster. If you see a blue, then that's going to be it's an outside the waistband holster. You can find these on Uline. Not that expensive either. So part number is S3848G. So that's the part number right there. And it's, uh, I don't know, there's like five, 600 labels in here. So that'll last me for two or three orders. Uh, so once this is done, then you get your bags. You can get the bags on Uline as well. These are part number S, oh, oh God, what was it? S3323. Uh, I use these ones for inside the waistband, so they work uh, very well. And let me get these out. So you notice I got the grid. This grid is um, goes by inches. So what I'll do is we have to clean this first. Just like anything you put a sticker to, you need to clean it. So take a little rubbing alcohol and just a quick whoop. That's it. I don't usually do all of them at a time. And I do one inch down, one inch over. And that puts it right in the center. Squeegee it. Take business card, put it right in the clip. Get the air out and there's that. So, do it again. Two, three, four. I'll have to do this with the rest that I have over there. But, again, real simple, real easy. Apologize for the shaking camera. It's mounted to my bench. My bench is on wheels. Alright, one over, one up.
I think this takes out longer than uh, actually making the holsters. You know, but yeah, you have to have presentation and all that. But like I said, gun stores don't really care about it. Never had a store not carry me because they didn't like the packaging. Plus, gun stores, they don't make money off of uh, off of guns. They make maybe 3%, except for nowadays because of the price gouging. But even the stores I go to or hang out at, there is none of that. All right, so. Just throw them in there. that card And there's five. I'm going to take them back out and clean them, but just for this purpose. So, Springfield Armory Hellcat, IWB Black, right-handed, 1.5 foamy, and adjustable can with Springfield's logo, my logo, my website. And I'll do that for all of them. And then print out the invoice, and then off I go. But I'll be trading these for uh, <laughs> this, but real. So, again, the EZ is designed for people that have uh, arthritis and don't have a lot of strength in their hands, hence the EZ. So, she's getting a 9mm because I don't want her having a 380. And uh, we'll show you that tomorrow when it happens. If she comes home with it with the 4473. So, we'll do that as soon as we get there and we'll hang out for a little bit to see what happens. But there you go. Happy bending. Enjoy. Have some fun. Make some money.